John here. This is Lick of the Day number 11. This one is in C minor and it's quite an intervallic one. And what I mean by that is that you have bigger intervals than just a regular scale going up and down. And to play this, we're going to use quite a lot of slides and hybrid picking. As usual, you have the tab available down in the description or by clicking on the thing here on the screen. So with that said, I'm just going to play through once slowly and then break the whole thing down. Right, we started on the 6th fret of the low E string and this is a B flat and we're going to start with a B flat major at 9 arpeggio. Basically two fifths stacked on top of each other. And then we add the 7th fret here on the G string. Uh, and like I said, this lick is in C minor, but it also works as a B flat Aeolian, sorry, B flat Mixolydian lick. So try that as well, because we actually end on B flat here. Uh, but played over C minor, the intervals would be flat 7, 11, or the 4th, the root, and the 9th. Then we slide up to the flat 3. And I'm going to show you this lick uh, beat by beat. Meaning I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, and so on. I think it's easier to visualize it that way because there's a lot of notes going back and forth. So it can be easy to sort of lose track of where you're at. But if you can sort of have that downbeat uh, as your guide, that will be easier. And in doing so, I will be repeating the first note uh, of each beat. When I do this, I'm, I'm gonna go basically four notes plus one. So that plus one note is the start of the next phrase. So it doesn't mean that you're gonna double it when you put it all together. All right, so I'm, I'm playing this with hybrid picking. You could do it with, with a sweep if you want to, uh, alternate pick it however you want, but I do hybrid picking. So I'm going down, M, uh, down, M, A, and then a downstroke here on seven again. And then the next beat will be on the eighth fret. So we're gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, one. And from there, we're basically in the, the C minor pentatonic position. And from here, I'm gonna go eight, then 11 using my M finger. And then 10, which slides up to 12. And then hit 11 again with the second finger. So. And these slides are supposed to be in time, so it's not, uh, you know, that kind of slide where it's kind of, uh, you know, where you, you disregard the time a bit and just go for it. So you, you really want to make these um, quantized. So one, two, three, four, one. Uh, and the fingering here, I think, is important. So one, four, three, three, two. So from the beginning. Now we're going to start on this note again, but again, don't double it. We have the start of the third beat here. So we got 11 with the M finger, then we go back to 10 with the index finger. And then we do uh, the pinky on the 13th fret. Again, play with the M finger. And then you slide up to 15. So, uh, and then I play the E string here, the 11th fret, with my M finger. And you actually have quite a lot of time here in between because the, the last it's a slide, so you, you, it's not going to feel rushed to play two, uh, two fingers at a, uh, in a row in terms of the right hand. So I'm going to go M, down, M, slide, M. And from here, we start on... This one, 11 again, and then go 11, 13, and then we slide up right to 18 uh, on the high E string. So, and I'm going to show you this whole thing when they're on 16. I'm going to show you the whole descending part and disregard the whole beat thing now, because I think it's easier to see this as its own package. It's quite logical. Uh, the first three strings is basically going to be like the uh, C minor pentatonic position here. 
but instead of going to the fourth and the flat three here, we're gonna go straight to the flat three and add a ninth instead, ninth or the second note of the scale. So we got flat seven, five, flat three, nine, and then we have, uh, whoops, the root and the flat seven, fifth, and then flat three, two, one, and flat seven. And that outlines uh, a C minor ninth arpeggio. And again, we're coming from this slide. And the way that I picked this is, so from this point, this is the, still the finger here, pull off, and then up, pull off, up, pull off, up, up, down, up, down. So, So that's basically it. So if we take that again from the beginning. So give that a try and see how it feels. Uh, again, if you have any trouble with this one, uh, I would check in on your overall hybrid picking. And I have quite a few hybrid picking videos here on the site. Uh, if you look in my in my channel, you should see some playlists that's dedicated to hybrid picking. So you can check that out for some extra advice there. But in general, try to identify which beat that gives you trouble and then work more on that. So if you find that this one is difficult, whoops, I did, obviously. work on that and then also try to identify is it the right hand that's giving you trouble or is it the left hand uh, an easy way to do that is just divide, you know play it one hand at a time if you find that that's easy but you find that that's really clunky then it's a good idea to work on things like that and like i said you can check out the, the hybrid picking playlist for more advice on the hybrid picking specific videos um, other than that, it's just a matter of identifying the problem areas and then trying to uh, move them around the fretboard a bit. So you can take the entire lick actually and just uh, start at the lowest point and then play it once there really slowly, see if you can do it. And so that's a really good way to, to work on the entire flow of it, and that will definitely improve the, the small problem areas as well. But do that as well as working on the specific problems you have. Uh, and, and that's a pretty big lesson for myself as well. I, I need to remind myself of that all the time because it's very tempting to just work on the whole thing because you feel like, oh, well, if I focus too much on one thing, maybe the other sh stuff will go to shit. But it doesn't really work like that. So if you if you identify the problem, that's basically you know you're eighty percent there then because then you know what to work on, uh, and, and you know that's that's the real benefit of having a teacher who can actually look and be a bit more objective and look at what you're doing, if it's a good teacher, and and see what you need to improve specifically. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of like you tend to try to work as much on everything and that does not lead to the most efficient and fast improvement. So if you find a problem somewhere, be really happy uh, because then you know exactly what to practice to improve the most. So the stuff that you're kind of good at, leave that for a while, you will still be kind of good at them and they will even get better uh, if you manage to find the actual problem areas in your playing. So I'm going to leave you with that. Any questions, just post them below. Otherwise, have a good one and see you in the next video.